Hello and welcome to the AD5X Flash Towards User Group on Facebook. This evening I'll show you a video on my work of Flash Towards settings so that you can take a look and compare it to what you have and maybe it will get some improved prints in our new printer. So, flipping over here, let me start off with the printer settings. Under basic information, about the only thing we need to look at is the offset. With the auto bed leveling, this shouldn't be an issue. You shouldn't have to change this, but on occasion you might. Uh, this is when the nozzle is too close or too far from the bed. You may want to increase it to 0 0.01 or 0 0.05, or you could do the opposite direction. You could do a negative 0 0.01 or a negative 0 0.05 uh, to move the nozzle closer or further away from the bed but just be careful here you don't want to overdo it you might scratch the nozzle on the bed and that would not be a good thing that is about the only change here i've made oh nope under extruder my fault under extruder you'll notice that i have the uh, 0.6 nozzle you probably have the 0.4 nozzle on your printer I'll show you where these make a difference in printing as we go throughout this video. One of the things I've changed is retraction. I've got a 0 0.8 on retraction, and the speed and direction is 35. Wipe distance, I think I also changed that to 2. The next change is this V-hop. This is when the printer moves up and down as it switches uh, lines and that sort of thing. I do top only, the top surface. I leave it at auto. Travel angles are the same, and retraction, I think I moved my retraction link down to 3 millimeters when switching between materials. Might improve printing. Next, we move on to your filament types. I like to use Elegoo Rapid Pet G. Works pretty well on the printer for me. You can use PLA. If you got PLA, just go with defaults. They seem to work okay when I've tried them. And same with TPU, if you're going to print with TPU, most of those settings seem to work out pretty well. For this Rapid Pet G, I like to check the recommended temperature, it's 220 to 260. For me, I need to reduce the flow. This helps a little bit with the stringing. I like to move it down to 0 0.95. So if you have a lot of stringing or if you're having gaps, in the first layer, you might want to increase that to 1.05. Little bits of things to play with. I enable pressure advance. If you go up here under calibration, there is the pressure advance test. Mine comes out at 0.02. You can try that number randomly. That'll help your corners if you're printing squares and your corners don't look quite right. That's where that change would take place. It makes a difference. For PET G, for this rapid PET G, I need to turn my speed or my temperature of the nozzle down to 270. One of the odd things you'll notice is the default bed type is smooth, high temp. Actually, it's a textured PEI plate, but it really doesn't matter since they're set in the same. Last thing you want to take a look at is volumetric speed. It should be between 20 and 25 typically for PET G and PLA. If you're using TPU, it's really low. It's like 3 to 5, I believe. This is the best place I've found to control print speed. If somebody tells you you're printing too fast, you need to slow it down, lower this number and see if that helps, as opposed to turning down all the speed settings that are over here. We'll look at that in just a minute. Cooling for me, I like to make it the second layer before cooling starts. It seems to stick to the bed a little bit better. My part cooling fan speeds are turned down just a tad bit because Pet G doesn't really like all the air. So stick with the basics or the defaults when you're using PLA. Next one I change is minimum print speed. I want the thing to always print at least 30. It should be able to handle that and it seems to. Let's see. I think I made one more change. Nope, I think that's all for the printer. Let's move on to filament. So do filament. I just did filament, didn't I? All right, let's move on to the other step. Moving on to quality. 
I like to print at 0 0.2. I can do it thicker if I wanted to or thinner. That's up to you, but 0 0.2 is pretty consistent. I like to make it a little bit thicker on the first layer. helps stick to the bed. Now you'll notice all my line widths are 0 0.62 and 65. That's because I've got the 0 0.6 nozzle. If you have a 0 0.4 nozzle, these will all be 4.2 and 4.5 numbers. So just leave them the way they are. You'll be all right. Next one I change is seams. Here under seams, if you go to back, let me slice the plate so you can see what I'm talking about. It makes these seams where the lines connect. If you go to aligned, it does a little bit better job. You'll see this shows up a lot in circular or curved objects. That line will show up. You can see it's kind of spread it out over here. It's not near as noticeable. But the main difference for seams that nobody does, but I seem to think makes a big difference, and that is to change this to seam gap. It's at like 6%, and it actually leaves a little gap there. Turn it down to zero, and the lines pretty much go away. If you feel experimental, you can do the joint scarf here. And see if that improves on your seams if you're doing circular objects. On the rest of these, I use no ironing. That's kind of crazy. A lot of people like that smooth look. I'll tell you how I get a nice smooth finish here in just a minute. Under wall generation, you want to use arcane as opposed to classic. It just speeds up the print. It's a newer technology and it designs the prints a lot better. The next tricky one here is wall print order, inner versus outer. For most objects, inner to outer is okay. I find it uh, prints a lot cleaner. But if I need something exact, or if I'm doing like flexible animals, then you want to do outer to inner. That way it prints this outer line first and then fills it in. That way it's a little more precise. Bridging I haven't changed, overhangs I haven't changed. Let's move on to strength. For walls, I have two walls. If you have a 0.04 nozzle, you'll probably want three walls. The next is the top layer. We get back to our top layer, how to make that nice and smooth. I like to do six shells at 0.2 millimeters thick. That gives me enough support underneath the model to make sure there's no gaps, no holes, and it goes over itself several times as you can see here as I shrink it down one two three four five six all right and for the bottom I usually do three at point six if you're doing flower vases or pots or something that needs to hold water crank that up I would do at least six at 1.2 or maybe more now you notice my surfaces on the top surface here I like to use Tobert's curve the reason I do that is because it best resembles the bottom side when you print on that PE, PEI sheet. And for the bottom, then I just use rectilinear, mainly because it's one of the faster infills and patterns that uh, the printer can print. And it doesn't cause very many problems. So if you look close here, you can see that you won't get those lines because of the PIE sheet. It'll look more like that. It gives you a nice smooth looking texture. Give it a try. On the infill, I usually use 10% infill. I just find it works about the best. If I need a stronger part, you can crank that up. I don't ever see a need to go over about 50%, but I leave that up to you. Again, I like rectilineal for the infill pattern and make sure to also use the solid infill pattern. Make sure those are the same no matter what you pick. Otherwise, you'll end up with some odd stuff here in the middle that doesn't quite look right. As we move down, I think that's about all the changes for that. Let's look at speed. How fast this thing prints? Well, first layer 45 and inner and outer worlds are 120, 150. Those are the defaults, folks. I find the defaults work just fine. And again, go back to the volumetric pressure uh, to adjust the speeds. It works a lot better. And I've left all the accelerations by default. 
Moving on to support, when I need support, I like to use tree support. I like the auto, and I like to select the slim ones because they don't take up near as much filament, and they're a little bit cleaner. I use on build play only so that we don't end up with things in between the items or sticking to the bottom of the items from the play up. For only critical regions, that reduces the amount of support it's using and the amount of filament and removes small overhang. I don't use raft. Under advanced, I think I might have changed a few of these. I don't really remember all, so I'll show you what I've got just in case. Top distance and bottom distance is 0 0.22. That's here and here. Again, I changed my base pattern to rectilinear. And I say that wrong, don't I? Base patterns. Uh, top interface, I like two. Gives it a little more thickness there, but it doesn't stick as well. Then top interface and bottom interface is 0 0.35. And I think, oh, here we go. Yep, on tree supports, I like to make them a little bit smaller. Five millimeters is good for that. And I don't do the brim, and I turn off the brim width to zero. That just saves a little more filament. Let's take a look at multi-material. Under prime tower, prime tower is not turned on. Yes, did you notice that? I do not use a prime tower. I have found that the printer leaves too many blobs on that little prime tower, and after it gets about five millimeters high, the nozzle of the pot end bumps into those and then causes layer shift in my print. So, I have made it a habit of not using a prime tower. If you're doing normal objects, that's probably okay. If you're doing like Q-Forge or a thin, small piece, you might need to turn prime towers back on. What I typically like to do, though, is to enable the prime tower, come down here, and turn the flush option. Turn both of those on, and then turn prime tower off. I don't know if that really makes a difference, but it makes me feel good, and I think it flushes like that correctly. Those are the only changes on that one. Final section under other, I don't do any skirt. Under brim, I don't use a brim. And when we come down here, fuzzy skin. I like funny fuzzy skin. I think it makes the 3D printed lines go away. I prefer contour and in the classic mode. And I just use a 0 0.5 on the distance and a 0.1 on the thickness and it just to me it smooths it out it matches the top and the bottom surfaces a lot better and well heck give it a try and see what you think one last thing i add and it's labels to objects because i think that's important it's a little clipper setting that was used to modify things i just do it and it works and that's about it Hey, I look forward to hearing your comments and questions. Feel free to leave them uh, on our Facebook page, the AD5X Flashboard User Group, or here on YouTube. Thank you. Have a good evening.